Hey, what is going on guys? Today we're taking a look at the real grade new Gundam and I've got to say it is a, another fantastic real grade. Bandai's really just been knocking it out of the park with the real grade kits as of late and this is another very, very great entry. If you're a fan of this Gundam, by all means, definitely go out and buy this. Even if you already have the Master Grade kits, I know maybe some people are going to be thinking like, oh, I already have the Master Grade Verka, do I really want to get the real grade? I would say yes. Even if you do, I would highly recommend you get this kit. So we're going to go over everything about it in this review. As you can see, I do actually have it all stickered up for a change. I don't often go ahead and put all the stickers on there, but I did in this case. And of course, we'll go through all the weapons and accessories and all of that as well here momentarily. As always, guys, a huge thank you to SA Gundam Store for sponsoring this review and for their support. You guys, do check out the link to their site down below. You can get this kit and everything else there on their website with 10% off using my coupon code there, Zakurilius10. Now, even for me, someone who's never really been a huge huge fan of the new Gundam. This kit has really brought me around quite a bit, so let me show you why. I'm gonna ask for the sticker sheet here that is, so I put on all of the stickers according to the manual, but you do have some leftovers, and I even used a few of the leftovers on there as well, just kind of threw those on where they made sense, but you have some options as well. Here you have like a couple of big ones here that are optional stickers for the shield, basically, uh, and then a couple just leftover bits there, and then options for the eyes if you want to have the one sticker that I use for the eyes is the black with green or you just have the black with the clear parts or you have just the green parts there for the eyes so you have some options there with some of those stickers. We have our tiny 144 scale Amro Ray figure here and I just want to point out that at the feet the connection to the base is super super duper thin so just be really careful with this if you push this at all it's gonna bend really easily and almost break off the base there you can see just that bend where the foot connection is very very tiny. Then we have our action base connector which is a bit different because this actually plugs up between the main body and the backpack so it'll plug up into there you have to remove the backpack to put this in and so the action base will actually be connected up underneath the backpack there instead of up underneath the crotch as usual so a little bit interesting action base connector for that. Then let's talk about hand options. I love these hand options. These are the kind of hands that I wish we would get in all of the kits. Here we've just got a set of closed fists and then a left and right set of open expressive hands here which also look very nice. The left and right set of holding hands for holding the beam saber handles. And then a single trigger finger hand here for the right hand. So whether it be real grades, high grades, master grades, it doesn't matter. I much prefer a nice set of fixed pose hands here like this. Uh, no swapping fingers, no articulated joints, just full on solid hands like this. They're just the best option in my personal opinion, so always glad to see those. As for beam saber effect parts, we've got two of these regular beam saber effect parts, but we actually only really need one, so one is an extra. These are for the beam saber handle, which is stored here on the back of the arm, which is really cool how this pops out. When you pull this part back, it pops out the beam saber handle like that, so it's really cool. It just tucks back in there. When you pull that out, it just pops up like that, and you can pull it out of there. This is just be kind of your standard beam saber there like that. And then we've got our set of specific beam saber blades here for the new Gundam signature beam saber back here on the backpack. You can pull that out and when this is held in the hand it has this little bit that kind of flips out like that. Very nice. The longer beam goes here at the top and this little tiny one goes in here at the bottom like this. There you go. Very cool. Again, very iconic weapon of the new Gundam. Then we have the beam rifle, which is not all that exciting usually, but it's still pretty nice and the color separation on it is really nice. Aside from just the blue and white here, you have little bits of gray on the inside that are like poking out through these bits here and there. And it is really nicely detailed. Nothing really on it moves except for this little bit here on the side. That little thing will pop out and you can plug this then onto the back skirt. The center part will move down. There you go, just enough so that you can pop this peg into there for storing this up inside there. The thing I'm worried about now is that once you've got the action base connector up in there, I'm not sure there's going to be space to connect the rifle. I don't think so, because the action base connector needs to go right up in there, right in that same space. All right, but moving right along anyway, we have the new Hyper Bazooka here. This has an extending feature like that, works really nicely. Main handle here will move forward and back so you can get this up over the shoulder. No problem there. Again, nice color separation with these little bits of gray. Then otherwise, just the blue and white separated parts there. And then, of course, the red for the ammunition inside of there. It all looks really nice. This one can also plug onto the backpack. Aside, and then just also these little camera stickers here, there. Also really nice. But yeah, the peg pops out here at the top. This plugs in right into the center of the backpack in there. So then that's stored onto the backpack like that, I suppose, with the handle folded down anyway. 
And then we have the shield. So as I mentioned, there are some optional markings for that. The big A, I went for this more decorative Amaro logo there for this. Uh, but you did have a couple options on the inside. Nice gray piece for that. More than what we got with the Sazabi. That was the one thing that I didn't really too much care for about the Sazabi. Real gray is that we didn't have a separate gray piece for the back of the shield for that one. But we do for this one, luckily. A separate little red piece there for the missiles in there as well. So really nice looking shield. Again, the color separation on this. The gray parts poking out from behind the white. Make it look really nice. This just attaches here onto the side of the arm. Onto there like so. And then that has a hinge. You can move that uh, side to side. So that's on the back of the arm there. But you can just rotate that kind of around onto the side of the arm. But then it's not really too much really on the side of the arm. And I suppose you could sort of rotate this in a way. Give me a second here. To something like that. I think is maybe a little bit more like towards the front. But anyway, there you go, there's the shield. And then, of course, last but not least, who could forget, we have the fin funnels, of course, here. So we've got six of these. And if you remember in the unboxing, these fin funnels in here, these are the only parts that had the advanced MS joint that we usually see as like the inner frame of the Gundam. So these will be able to fold up like that. And the only problem is, with everything that you get in this box, you don't get anything to actually have these attached to any sort of action base or anything. The plug here in the back is this very strange looking one that it's not a circle, so you can't just plug that onto any random three millimeter plug for like an action base. And so you'd have to like scratch build something in order to plug this onto anything. Now that said, there is the double fin funnel set, which is the P Bandai set that's coming out, which comes with effect parts for this. Um, there's also the effect parts. Bandai recently had the figure eyes effect parts set that came out at like the same time. Uh, that does work with this. That's available in blue and yellow. I wanted to go in for the review, but they were sold out here, so I couldn't. But those are also uh, working for this if you wanted to have some effect parts for this and not go for the P Bandai effect part set with the double fin funnels anyway. So these of course will fold up and you can connect them together. They have these bits here on the top there that will stick out to the side. So those little tiny bits that fold out are what's going to connect them together to each other. And I should mention that they only have it on one side so on the bottom half they don't have any of that. The detail is kind of molded in there for it but it's not an actual working piece. It's only on the top they actually have that connection. But what you can do is plug them all together and then plug them onto his back and I gotta say the connection does feel pretty strong here. It doesn't feel like they're gonna fall apart or anything so they're pretty well connected. That's good. So just plug onto any one of these here on that little hook part there. There you go. Connected to his back again. Feels pretty solid. You can definitely feel them shaking around but as long as you're not like shaking it on purpose they're not gonna fall off anywhere so feels pretty good the very last thing this does come with is this does come with another connection here for the other side now that's for if you do get the double fin funnel set so i guess they didn't want to give these parts with the double fin funnel set they wanted to give it to you with actual kit and you use this on here and then you can connect the uh, other set of fin funnels onto the other side as well i suppose you could use this and split them up like half and half with this so you could actually use this here with just the kit i suppose and before we get into the articulation, a few other things I want to point out. Uh, one thing is about the colors. I really like the colors that this is done in. Uh, it's just got the one tone for the blue. They didn't bother separating like two tones of dark blue. I think that's good. It really just wouldn't have been really necessary. They could have tried it, but I'm glad they didn't. They did go for the two tone white though, but it's really, really subtle. So you can see there's white and off-white here. And I think it's more subtle than with other RG kits in the past. And so some of the other ones, I think it was it was too much. But this one, I think it's a really good amount of just a very, very slight difference between the white and off-white. It is noticeable, but it doesn't really pop out at you. So the colors on this are really, really nice. Let's talk about some opening hatches. So the cockpit, of course, does open. You can lift this whole front part up. It's a little bit stuck, but you can lift that up like that. There's nothing up inside of there. But that just lifts open like that. Alternatively, you can just slide the red part up. I think I'm gonna have a little trouble doing that, but that red part also slides up for a different option for opening up to the cockpit there. And this does have a few other open hatch sort of gimmicks, but they really seem like they're pretty much only there for the inevitable heavy weapons set that we're gonna have coming out for this. So like over here on the chest, these front panels will slide to the front. 
and up underneath these kind of lower panels will also slide down like that. So the ones on top don't really expose much of the frame there, but these ones on the side definitely open up a lot more like that. Also on the front skirts here, this bit will just pull down like that. That one very obviously just to show the attachment point there for the heavy weapon system parts there on the front of the front skirts. And then down here on the side of the leg, you have those two parts of dark blue. One part will slide forward ever so slightly. That will slide open just a little bit like that and exposing a little bit of frame in there. And again, it looks pretty nice. This doesn't have any of the clear parts for the partial psycho frame like the Master Grade Verka did, but I feel like if you were to go in and like paint some nice like metallic color up inside the, some of these open hatch gimmicks, you could get that effect to make it look like that there for some of these parts. So that's pretty cool if you wanted to go ahead and do that. Now let's get into the actual articulation here. So the head's already kind of doing his thing. That can go all the way up very far up to there, really, really nice. And then all the way down to there, basically looking straight down into the cockpit. So incredible neck articulation there. These shoulders are really, really nice. This outer part here will move up on its own like that. That moves separately up like that. And then like the front and back parts will also move up on their own like that. So those can move up and down. They're each connected on a hinge from the main part of the shoulder armor. That can move up all the way up on its own like that, completely out of the way. And then the arm can also come up to about there. And then we get to the shoulder joint and we can bring it up all the way up to there. So no problems with the articulation upwards at all and then once we pull that joint out away from the body a little bit forward articulation is also going to be very very full in this one as well otherwise for the arms here just a standard rotation there at the top a double joint here in the elbow to give you a nice full bend there as well and then the wrist is just on a ball joint and there is one more small joint here this whole front section there of the form the kind of like the base of the wrist that also moves up and down a little bit there as well but I should mention this, that about the holding hands, these have a separate joint here in the wrist as well. So only these, none of the other hands have this, but this set of hands does have this extra joint here in the wrist as well, moving up and down like that. Let's quickly going back around here to the backpack. You have sort of another opening gimmick here with this panel that will open up like that. That will just open up a little bit, but that will also allow you to move these thruster bells, this set of thruster bells up and out a little bit more. So I'm trying to be a little bit careful. It moves up and out like that. So just a slight difference, but you can see you can change the angle of those more straight out by just moving, opening that part up like that. So that's pretty cool. Then going down to the skirt armor here. So the front skirts will move up and you can get them to about 90 degrees like that. There you've got some nice detail up underneath. And again, if you guys didn't see in the unboxing, I talked about how detailed the inner frame is. Obviously you can't see pretty much most of it now, but the detail on the inner frame for this kit is absolutely fantastic. It looks amazing. So definitely worth noting about that again here as well. The side skirts will go up to there. The back skirts will also move up and down, up on down like that. You can move those out and again, some really fantastic detail up on the inside of there as well. Now before we move on to the hip gimmick, we'll go back up here to the torso for the stomach crunch here. You can move that all the way back like that so that's pretty much like looking pretty broken forward though if we pull that out and you can move that all the way to the front so we just kind of like extended that contraption there in the waist you can get a pretty crazy bend forward and back it looks weird with it like that but if you wanted a really crazy stomach crunch you can get one like that and then side to side though that is also covered here you can get that side to side up in there as well although once that's actually pushed all the way down to where it's supposed to be side to side is going to be limited to pretty much nothing the rotation though you still have that of course no problems with that all right now onto the hip gimmicks so this has a pretty interesting way how you have to move this around so you have to go through a 10 step process to do it you fold this part down, you rotate the legs down to the lower position on the track. This part here at the back, you'll have to slide that down, basically what we did before for attaching uh, the beam rifle into the back of there. Then back around here to the back, this part up above that will flip up slightly like that and push that lower part back up into its original position. Back around to the front and open up this out to the front like that. And then drop this whole section down like that just a little bit. Close this back up in the front. Close that back down in the back. And finally close that back up there at the bottom as well. And now you've got a slightly lowered hip section there and you can have uh, more articulation here in the hips, I guess. 
So now you're able to bring up that leg super far up to the front like that, I guess, is the point of that. It doesn't really seem like it gives you that much more articulation for the how complicated the process is to get it there, but it's there anyway. And just on the legs themselves, I just want to bend this again just to show you how nice that separation here is with that panel there on the thigh. And then you have some nice separation here at the knee as well. So those separating panels look fantastic. And then one more time, we'll bend this again and focus on this part here on the back of the leg as well. Also moves out. When you bend that down, that will also move out a little bit like that, pushing that part out of the way to give you a really nice full bend there. So that part on the back of the leg moves with that bend as well so that's really really cool but we're not quite done yet because down here in the ankles when you move the ankle back this part here on the front also moves down with the ankle as well so that is really really cool there so you can get the foot all the way down to there no downward toe bend but you don't really need it there at this point you've got a full foot pointed all the way down like that you can bring the foot up to the front like that you do have an upward bend here at the toe so there's the normal position and then up to the front a little bit like that. Up underneath the feet, beautiful detail there as well. Color separation also looks really nice. And then side to side, it will go side to side really nice and far there as well. So the ankle joint on this, the ankle joint really does seem very similar to a Master Grade. And a lot of this kit basically seems, it's basically a Master Grade in 1 44 scale. And then just for a size comparison, here is with a couple other uh, big boy real grade kits. And even the Unicorn is not coming up to the same height as the new Gundam here. That's even not including the fin funnels, just the head height. The new Gundam is pretty tall. Still not going to be quite as big as the Sazabi, of course, but still you can get a good idea about this. Actually, I didn't even know actually that the Unicorn was not as tall as the new Gundam. I would have figured that the Unicorn in Destroy Mode would have been taller, but I guess maybe not. But I gotta say the other thing that I really love about this kit it is the proportions. I think they just really nailed the proportions of this, not just like the length of the legs and like the size of the torso, but also just really small things like especially the length of the face. There was one thing that the new Gundam always had that long face and it just didn't really look very good, but they definitely made it look so much better with this kit. They just nailed the proportions so well on this. It just looks fantastic. If you don't really like the super long like Kotoki style legs, then maybe you're not really in too much into this, but I think they really went for the really Kotoki length for the legs on this one. But I think that it looks good. They look they look great. Everything on this kit just looks really fantastic. One thing I am noticing though about those fin funnels, while they seem really well connected, like they're not going to fall off or anything, you are going to get some curl there. I, maybe I'm not doing something right. As far as I can tell, according to the manual, I've got them connected how they're supposed to be, but they're just not connected so tight that they're going to be able to avoid starting to curl once you've got them. And it's just due to the weight of them. They're just kind of slightly bending like that, which is just a little bit annoying. I wish they would stay straight, but I can kind of understand just due to the weight of them, that's going to be a little bit hard to do, I think. And I'm also pleasantly surprised to see that you can actually have that beam rifle plugged onto the back skirt while using the action base adapter there. You're able to squeeze that in there just barely inside so that works really nicely and so yes as far as we can tell there's really very little to complain about with this kit i would say if there's one thing that i do wish that was different about the kit it was that maybe if it had some way to actually display the funnels in some sort of flying position now i know they want to give you the effect parts in a separate set but just at least include like some sort of adapter in here just one little piece so at least you could like, display like one funnel flying or something like that just a little adapter to plug onto the the back of the funnel that you could then plug it onto just like a normal action base or something like that or even a couple of those just you know to be nice or some sort of way to be able to display the fin funnels flying around the mobile suit otherwise just having it attached onto the back uh, or not as you've seen in a couple poses here uh, is just really the only thing that you can do with them with the kit as it is so that is a little bit disappointing uh, but there are different options that you can look into if you wanted to have the fin funnels actually out flying around. And so it is a kind of pretty iconic thing about the mobile suit, obviously. So that is probably something that a lot of people, I would guess, are going to want to be looking into. So other than that, though, I think there's very, very little to complain about with this kit. It's much, much more pros than cons with this. There's almost nothing to complain about, really. It's pretty much almost a perfect kit. It's really, 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 really good.
And so with that, guys, if you have any other further questions or comments, do feel free to leave those down below if I missed anything. I don't think I did. I tried to cover everything. There's a lot of little gimmicks and things like that to go through with this kit, so it's very possible I could have missed some tiny little articulation gimmick or something that is uh, something that is not clearly explained in the manual, but I tried to do my best. And again, a big thank you to SA Gundam Store for their support, guys. Do check the link to their site there down below in the video description and check out what they've got there on their site. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.